Kong Skull Island is the latest movie featuring the iconic title character of King Kong and in this film it's a slightly different version to what we've seen before it's not another remake of the classic story in which King Kong gets brought back to New York on the Empire State Building in the 1930s it's not anything to do with that at all in this film it's essentially all about King Kong and Skull Island and the monsters on Skull Island and these group of scientists, explorers and soldiers that come to this island on this expedition, on this kind of exploratory mission and then they come across King Kong and they basically go into this battle of survival to try and make their way off this island and not get killed by all these crazy monsters. Now going to this film I was actually kind of excited and looking forward to it. I wasn't you know, like I hyped out my mind or anything. I am a fan of the lot of the King Kong films. I actually really like the Peter Jackson version from 2005. I don't think it's an amazing film. I think the first hour is very slow. Like if you get past the first hour, once you actually get to Skull Island, it's quite good then from that point onwards. But you know, it's quite long. It does drag a bit and it's not the best film, but I do really like that film. With this film though, however, it was intriguing because it was a very different kind of version of the story we've come to know. It's not, in the 1930s, it's not in the wartime, it's not King Kong being brought back to New York, the Empire State Building, it's nothing to do with any of that, it's a completely new, fresh, different take on the character and the story that we've come accustomed to over the years. In that sense, it's almost kind of like Legend of Tarzan from last year, and that was a fresh and different take on the character of Tarzan. But like Legend of Tarzan, this film I don't think was that great. It didn't surprise me that it wasn't a great film, and I don't think it was a bad film, I don't think it was, you know, horrible not by any means. I did enjoy this film. I think it was entertaining but I did have some problems with it and there were some things that you know bugged me a bit so there was a lot I liked about this film but there was also a lot that kind of you know I wasn't that crazy about that kind of hampered the film for me and so I liked this film. I thought it was good but it wasn't great. I'll start off with a positive because like I said there was a lot that I did like about this film. I think one of the best things about this film was the visuals. For me this film was just stunningly shot. There were so many gorgeous, striking visuals in this film. Obviously the director of this film came from an independent film background. I, didn't, I haven't seen his other film, The Kings of Summer I believe it is, but even though I don't think his voice came through that much in the finished product, I do feel like a lot of his kind of input went, went, went into the visuals. It did feel like it was directed by someone who had a kind of unique visual style, it didn't just feel like a generic blockbuster from a visual perspective, it was quite cool and you know different in terms of the, the visual style of it, how it was shot, how it was cut together, there was some slow motion in there, there was some really cool striking visual moments and the imagery. I really liked the look of the film, even though I don't think this was a great film. And you could make an argument that it was a bit style of a substance and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that but I did really like the whole visual style of this film and how it looked from a visual perspective. And also another big positive for this film was that it was very fast paced. Even if you really didn't like this film I don't see how anyone could say that it was slow or boring because it was really moving at a blistering pace. It never became slow or dull or boring for me and I was really worried that this film would be boring. I would have really hated this film if it got boring. But for me, it never dragged, it never got slow. And even though I didn't love every single thing about this film, and I, I didn't think it was a great film, I did really like how it was very fast paced. So it was constantly moving. It got into the story very quickly, it didn't mess around. You know, I, I probably would have preferred if they did take more time to, to, to kind of you know, go into the characters a bit more and have a bit more of a story there. But as far as the pacing is concerned, I think it was the best decision to make this film fast paced because I did really like the 2014 Godzilla film, but that's more of a kind of slow, kind of more kind of dramatic film. Whereas this is quite different. It's this big, fun, silly kind of monster movie. And I think it worked really well for it to be a really fast paced film. Also, speaking of the monsters, this is of course a monster movie. And one of the best things about this film, the highlights were of course the scenes with the monsters. It had really cool monsters in this film. And I really liked the action sequences with the monsters because Yes, a lot of the other stuff wasn't that great, but as far as the monsters were concerned, that was all really cool. Some of my favourite things about that Peter Jackson film was all the, the cool creatures on the Skull Island, but we didn't really get a lot of that, because obviously they went back to New York then after the island trip. But this film is really all about the island and all about the monsters on the island. Pretty much the entire film is set on the island, so it was really great and really cool to see all these cool crazy monsters and Kong going up against all these monsters and the fights between Kong and these kind of skull crawlers were really cool as well. 
as much as I like the Peter Jackson film, it was mostly kind of dinosaurs on that island. In this film, there aren't any kind of real animals. It's all kind of crazy, kind of otherworldly kind of creatures and monsters. And it's really cool seeing these creatures in the film and Kong going up against them. And so that was a big highlight as well. And of course, Kong. I like the look of Kong. I probably prefer the look of Kong in the Peter Jackson version. So it looked more realistic and a mocap there from Andy Serkis. But I did like this version in terms of it was something different. It wasn't just like a regular gorilla blown up, you know, it was like a almost his own species. It was more brown, it was more kind of like, you know, warts and two legs. It was more like the original King Kong. It's less of just like a regular gorilla, it's more of its own kind of species, and I really like that. It's upright, it's more brown, and obviously it's much bigger as well than the Peter Jackson version, which I really liked because obviously we're gonna see this one go up against Godzilla in Kong versus Godzilla. And John C. Riley mentions he's not fully grown yet, so I think by the time we get to that team up film, he'll be even taller. So it's going to be cool to see them go up against each other. Also, speaking of Godzilla, I like how this film had ties and references to that 2014 Godzilla film and the history of this world. There were little kind of kind of Easter eggs and little references here and there, and I and I liked how they did that because it wasn't kind of beating you over the head. It wasn't really kind of like in your face, you know, it was subtle enough so that someone who hasn't seen Godzilla probably wouldn't pick up on it. But as someone who had seen Godzilla, I ran out to all these little references and Easter eggs that are caught there, all the references to like the 40s and the 50s, you know, Godzilla attacking this ship, the, the nuclear test in the Pacific. And I liked how they kind of referenced that because this film, of course, is set in the 70s, which I really liked. Another thing that made it different. And obviously it was only 20 years after those nuclear tests in the Pacific, so it's kind of, it's all coming off that in a way, and I like how they reference the events in the past, I and mean, we even see like the history of it in the title sequence at the beginning. So yeah, I liked how they reference the history of this world of monsters, and teased and referred to Godzilla here and there, but it wasn't kind of beating you over the head, it wasn't really in your face. And again, my last positive is that it's its own thing, it's a fresh and different take on the character of King Kong and this story, that we already know, but it's a different kind of story here and that it's all on Skull Island, it's all about King Kong and the monsters. It's in the Vietnam era, so you know, early 70s, which I like to give it that kind of apocalypse now feel almost. It wasn't just set during the wartime, set during Vietnam in the 70s, which was cool, gave it a kind of different kind of uh, edge to it. So yeah, I really like that about this film also. However, as far as negatives are concerned, there were a lot of things that I wasn't crazy about with this film and some things that kind of kind of hampered it and held it back from being a really great film. The first is that this film had very weak characterization and everyone in the comment sections I seem to be seeing on other videos are saying, oh come on, it's like, it's King Kong, it's about the monsters, who cares about the characters, who cares about a lack of character development, no one cares about those guys, we're all there for the monsters. And I do agree with that in a way. This is a monster movie. It's really cool to see these monsters, but at the same time, that's not an excuse to just have really bland, dull, boring characters that you don't even like or care about. Because at the end of the day, as cool as all the monster stuff is and all the fight scenes, if you don't really like the characters or care about the characters and are invested in those characters and their exploits, you're not really going to care about all the stuff that's going around them and be invested in that. And some of the best monster movies over the past decades have had really great characters okay they're not straight up monster movies but something like Jaws or Jurassic Park you know people love those films and go back to those films not necessarily just for like the monster scenes but for the characters this film okay it had really cool monsters and really cool fight scenes but you don't really kind of care about the characters really because the characters aren't really fleshed out and developed my biggest criticism with this film is that I did like the characters but there wasn't really much to the characters, you know, they're a very kind of poorly sketched. And I'm not looking for really rich, textured, well-drawn, in-depth characters here. This isn't kind of some Oscar drama or something. But, you know, I did want characters to latch onto because at the end of the day, a lot of these characters in this film aren't really characters. They're almost like caricatures of people. They don't feel like real people. Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, Samuel Jackson, John C. Riley, John Goodman, great cast, really great actors, but a lot of them, aside from maybe Samuel L. Jackson and John C. Riley, who do their thing and they're really great, a lot of these actors, even though they're great actors, they don't really get much to do in this film, and I feel kind of 
bad for them in a sense because they are really good actors but they don't really get the opportunity to shine in this film and yes it's about the monsters and that stuff's really cool but as far as the characters are concerned I mean Tom Hiddleston is meant to be this cool badass action hero he's a bit of a kind of generic kind of cool badass action hero guy there's not really much to his character at all there's a scene with Brie Larson that he talks about this lighter that his dad gave him and that's really it I mean there's a couple of scenes between him and Brie Larson there's an exchange with him and Brie Larson on the ship which I really liked and also that exchange with the the lighter I was talking about but that's it and I like those moments I wanted more stuff like that and I love the monster stuff I do but I wanted more from these characters I wanted more to this story than just cool monsters and fightings I loved all of that stuff but I felt like there wasn't really much else to this film other than that. Brie Larson as well I have to mention I love Brie Larson I think she's great she did a phenomenal job in Room and this is her first big blockbuster film obviously she's going to be doing Captain Marvel for Marvel Studios after this. She didn't do a bad job in this film but she didn't really have anything to do like she's not even playing a real person in this film she's a photographer but literally all she does in this film is take pictures that is it. Every time she's on screen she's just taking a picture Whenever we see her in the film, she's just taking pictures. That's it. That's all she gets to do. She's just taking pictures. It's like, okay. And like I said, uh, Samuel Jackson and John C. Riley, they're great. They're really the saving graces of this film. Samuel Jackson, he always turns up. He always does his thing. And he can even make a bad film good. You know, even if Samuel Jackson's in a not very good film, you know, if he's in it, he's going to save the film. You know, and he does a great job here. The typical kind of over the top crazy Samuel Jackson character thing that he does a lot and it really works for this film as well and also John C. Riley was great. One of my other negatives would be that a lot of the humour in this film really fell flat but all of the humour and everything that came from John C. Riley really worked and he was really the saving grace of this film as far as the humour is concerned because a lot of the other humour really fell flat, didn't work and didn't really need to be there but all the humour that came from his character really worked and I think everything about him, his performance and his character was really cool and really funny. Also I had to touch on the story or lack thereof because you know I get the fact that this is just a big dumb fun crazy monster movie but there's not really much to it story wise you know you take away the monsters and the fight scenes there's not really anything there beneath the surface. I don't like comparing films to one another that are completely different films but you take a film like Logan and even if you take away the action sequences from that film it's still really great with the characters and the drama and the story there. You take a film like this, you take away the monsters and the cool fight scenes, it will just be really boring and obviously that stuff really worked and was the best thing about this film but then if you take away the monsters and the fight scenes there's not really much else going on other than that. And finally my last negative, I don't want to feel like I'm going on too much about negatives because even though there was a lot about this film that I didn't like that I wasn't crazy about. There wasn't anything that really ruined the film for me and I did still like it and enjoy it overall but my biggest negative would probably be the uneven tone because for the most part this is a really big fun silly crazy almost b-movie kind of creature feature monster movie which I liked and I liked the fact that it, in a way that it was just simple stripped back back to basics but at the same time as I said there's not really much else to it than that and also it tries at certain times to kind of be a bit more serious and dramatic and emotional and those moments really don't work. They're few and far between but whenever it tries to go from some crazy fun you know 80s montage kind of thing or 70s style Vietnam music and then we try to go to a serious dramatic moment it's like it doesn't really work it's a little bit all over the place tonally and I kind of got that impression from the trailers. Say what you will about the Suicide Squad but that did maintain a tone throughout regardless of whether that was David Ayer's original vision or not. Whereas this film is kind of like Suicide Squad in a way that it's just kind of really crazy and all over the place. But whereas Suicide Squad maintained that tone, this film it's a little bit uneven tonally. As I said, it would go from some fun, big, silly moments to try and be more serious and dramatic. There was a particular moment in the third act, which I'm pretty sure was meant to be kind of a serious, dramatic, emotional moment. But the screen that I went to see in the first time I saw this film, like a, a week ago, everyone burst out laughing. It's like because so much of this film is just fun and silly and stupid. And you don't really take it seriously that when they tried to do a serious dramatic moment everyone just burst out laughing because it was funny and I don't think it was meant to be a funny moment maybe it was but I'm pretty sure it's meant to have an emotional kind of dramatic feel to it but everyone just found it funny so all in all I did really like Kong Skull Island I didn't love this film I didn't think it was a great film I did 
like it for the most part. I did think it was mostly entertaining. and I did enjoy the film for what it was. You know, if you take this film as just a big, fun, silly, B-rate monster movie, it's really great. But if you go in expecting anything more than that, you probably will be disappointed and underwhelmed because there's not really much else going on there. So in the end, guys, I'm going to give Kong Skull Island three stars. And there we have it. That wraps up my review of Kong Skull Island. Have you seen the film yet? And if so, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this and you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe to see more. But for now, I've been David O'Sullivan. I'll see you next time.